job too. I can see Alice, um, Alice Jane Brown. I can see Kenneth Ibe, Marilyn. You are all welcome. And my other personal colleagues, Martha Wilson and Grace. Thank you for joining us in today's class. I am Iken Michael Okafo. I will take you through HR Foundation. The beauty of it is that you've done um, HR Essentials. So um, what I'll be saying now will not be strange to you. It will only be like, you will be saying, wow, that's true. Yes, this was mentioned. Okay, so um, we are not going to waste time because this class is going to be very, very brief. So just go straight to the point before we um, enter our next course. So these are the objective of the class. We'll be looking at, um, we'll explain the concept of human resource operations, examine the various operations in human resources, influence of external bodies and laws on human resource operations, review how to apply the skills needed for human resource operations and develop templates used in human resource management or in human resources. Okay, if you can hear, you can hear me in the chat room clearly please type zero, zero. If you can hear me in the chat room clearly, type zero, zero. Okay. Okay, let's go with another exercise. You are going to type also your industry, what industry you belong. So you type um, manufacturing, you type banking, you type Whatever industry you type, Oliver, you can start typing now. You can start typing any government industry. Okay. Um, I want to see more industries. We have about 10 of us, social welfare, education. Um, okay. So I expect other people to still drop theirs. Okay. All right. So. So let's proceed. Um, when you talk about human resource operations, we are looking about, we're talking about the day-to-day -day affairs of the human resource department and organization, all right? So you come across um, basic concepts like recruitment, talent management, disciplinary management and change management, leave management, compensation, the place of law and regulations in human resource management, as well as policy, processes, and procedures. Kenneth even says, I'm jack of all trade now. I think I understand very well. <laughs> Don't worry, you will specialize very soon. Okay. So, um, HR operations is carrying out the day-to-day tasks of an you know, of an organization following system, systematic approach defined. There are key words I want us to pick here. It has to do with day-to-day -day operations, a systematic approach that is predefined. It is predefined. Okay. In HR your um your holy book your guide are your policies it is not written it did not happen if it's not written, it did not happen. 
So you must ensure that everything you are doing in HR is written. And it's written in form of your policy, it's written in form of um, processes, it's written in form of procedures. Keep it documented. Keep it documented. Human Resource Department also gives support to every other department of an organization. That's why you see some, some organizations, they call it, um, you might have in some departments, you have something like what is called support service. Now, under support service, you have other sub departments like human resource, admin, corporate relations, and what have you. So, the human resource operations is interested in the entire life cycle as well of the employee. What, how the employee comes in, what the employee does, and how the employee leaves. So, from the beginning, you could see where we talk about talent management. But first, the employee comes. Your internal customers, which are the employees, comes to be first. They are the one to arrange the machines, right? They are the one to see how the operations will go. Then after the internal customers, you now have the external customers, which are the those who bring checks to us, right? So um, human resource is concerned with the day-to-day -day affairs. So what account is doing? The human resource should be concerned about it. You should be concerned that you should be concerned if your account department is functional or not. You should be concerned if your audit department is functional or not. You should be concerned if your marketing department is functional or not. You should be concerned if the man, um, your your the marketers you sent out is it's um, functional. You should even concerned if the man um, uh, packaging your pure water. The man using the sealing machine or um, the, the person driving the trucks on the way you should be concerned about what that person is doing and how the person is doing what the person it ought to do. That is human resource operations. So from the chat room, we have um, we have those in the government. So how do your clerk officers? attend to people who who, uh, who need something from the, that particular office you occupy. You should be concerned how they do it. You should be concerned about how the driver who goes to pick staff in the morning does it. You should be concerned about your field officers, if you are taking statistics, how they go about their duties. The time frame. The education, you should be concerned about the teachers, how they deliver their lectures. That is the operation. You, you, you give necessary support from the human resource perspective for the manufacturing. Those who are maybe um, you are into maybe um, sweet production, for instance, you should be concerned about the man handling the sealing machine, the man handling the molding machine, the man handling the carton machine. How he does he handle? Nobody saying you should know how to handle carton machine. Nobody should say you should know how to seal or you should do it. But you should understand the mechanism in it in respect to human resources, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, in carrying out various tax activities and operations of the human resource department as it relates to human resource, we have to know the four Ps in human resource. Can someone tell me the four Ps in marketing? There are four Ps in marketing. There are even eight, but let's go with the basic four. We, we are now seeing the four Ps in, uh, in HR. So what are the, let's just refresh our memories. What is, what is the four Ps in marketing? Because as human resource person, you also have to have a very good business acumen. I always tell people that you need to have a very good business acumen. You should know leads to of everything. You can put it in one, message that will all get it once okay let's put it in one um message so you all get it once all right so the four p's of marketing the four p's of marketing okay so if we are sharing it someone type place someone type price someone type product and price and someone type product again 
You see, so that's wanted us to be in, in one message. So we'll know which one is missing. Now we can actually say which is missing. Even though I know the one that is missing anyway. Okay, so let's um, proceed. Let's proceed. The last key that is miss missing is promotion. 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 So that's uh, a, 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 a bonus I just give to, to us. So in human resource, we have also four Ps. We have four Ps. They are also up to eight as well, but we we'll only confine ourselves to four for this particular level. But as we go on, we're going to see different, or we may come across different other Ps of human resource. One of the Ps of human resource management that every other is built upon is people. 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 That's the number one P in human resource. The next P is policy. Policy. The next P is procedure. Procedure. And the last one is process. Processes. So these are the four P's of marketing. Can someone type it for us in the chat room? Can someone type it for us in the chat room? Let us have it in the chat room. So, like we said earlier on, that human resource operations um, is done systematically and procedurally. It must be systematic and it must be done in a procedural manner. It is, um, it is it's entirely of the um, activities being carried out by the human resource department in the employee's life circle and its totality of the tax being carried out by the human resource department to give strategic business support to the organization using manpower. So first of all, you create availability of manpower before you give every other kind of support you wish to give. You see, you see why we have we have to type it in the chat. So that everybody, otherwise Mr. Kenneth would have missed it now. So we have it from um, matter, people, policy, process, people, policy, procedure, and process. Okay, so everything you are doing in human resource is guided by this and invariably then affects the other department. I'll give you a very typical example. I'll give you a very typical example. Um, I was working in a place when I was in the hotel and somebody, a, a guest came and was complaining that she had to wait a longer time before she's attended to. The human resource department was asked to, um, the human resource department was asked to investigate for that. Now, from my investigation, we found out, found out that they didn't have a process for, for attending to guests. When we watch the CCTV camera, this woman would have been attended to a long time ago, but um, the girl did not follow. There was no process, so she was not attending to anybody that she feel comfortable with. But if there was a process in place that first confessed that this is what you should do, even when the person is waiting, this is what you should do. When the document is up, this is what you should do. That wouldn't have happened. So we, what, we, what we did was we developed a policy for front desk office on how to attend to guests. And automatically, there was a turnaround immediately of zero complaint from the front desk when it comes to turn around, when it comes to turnaround time, when it comes to attending to guests, there was zero complaint when it also comes to um, answering of calls. There are some organizations that there is a particular way they answer call. There is a particular way they must answer call. It, you, you must follow that pattern. Failure to do that, you are deviating from the policy. So you see that human resource is concerned with every other department. If you look at this next slide, you see the various con 
concerns of the human resource department. So, um, for anyone, can you in the chat room type two that you love most, two that you want to major in, that, that you want to major in, or you love most, even if you don't major in that, you just love it, even if you don't major in just type two of these that you can see on your screen that, oh, I love, I would love to be handling, I would love to concern about, I would love to specialize in, I would love to, love to, love to, two of these in your screen that Sorry about that. I'm so sorry. Unfortunately, our network in this uh, country have not been good, even though our charges have increased. So sorry about that. Okay, so if you can hear me now, um, the last thing I said before the breaking transmission was you should type the area of human resource resources here that interest you the most. Because we are talking about, we examine the various human resource operations. So which of these HR operations interest you the most? I want you to type two in the chat room. I want you to type two in the chat room. Two of these operations, human resource operations in your screen that interests you the most. Okay, so let's see. Train and development, okay. Good. So we have train and development, yes. Can we have more in the chat room? Let's see, let's see more interests. HR management, okay. Uh, 
okay organizational change and performance management okay recruitment management and training management okay beautiful okay so i can see we are very much interested in training so this, this is the more reason why we have to you have to continue to the um level three level three we are going to give you training at a very very understanding level okay I'm going to give you training at a very very understanding level we'll talk about how to administer training tna and other other things so let's talk about um since there i also saw some um, recruitment to and hr management we're going to pick recruitment okay so all this in any case is something that as a hr generalist or hrbp you ought to know you ought, you ought to be conversant with you ought to be conversant with even if you want to be a specialist you ought to be conversant with the recruitment these are the basic um payroll management and recruitment are kind of basic that almost all hr does people's management which is the HR management, you do that, of course, every blessed day, you manage people. Every blessed day, you manage um, people. All right. So, um, we proceed. Okay, we'll talk of training, insurance management, performance management. We'll also do this in your level two. Organizational change management, we'll also do this policy, um, policies and form publishing, organizational survey employee suggestion management, um, newsletter, opinion polls, events, employee and managers, um, self-service. So the beauty of this is that we will be engaging on all these individually. We'll be engaging with all these individually, okay? Um, but for this, we're going to take just um a little of um payroll and recruitment so but on a broad view you see the six core responsibilities of hr which has to do with administration all those further at um operations you can fix them under this which is under administration under compliance under recruitment onboarding employee relations offboarding Offboarding is as important as onboarding. But unfortunately, many organizations don't, don't, don't take that serious. Offboarding is as important as onboarding. But a lot of big organizations that you, you, you can mention their name today don't even care about offboarding. All right. So the next thing we'll be looking at is um, the various HR uh, various HR operations, various HR operations. So still similar to what you have, I believe you also saw this three when you are doing your um, HR essentials. You must have seen this for those that partook in it. This is very important because this is what you handle every day. This is what you handle every blessed day. Like payroll is monthly. Recruitment is almost often. Policy is also every day. You use policy to do what you, what's your job. Even those uh, um, in, in, in their various bits. The security man in his bits has a particular way of carrying out his duty. For instance, maybe part of the policy is that you, you, in, in morning duty, you must have two security at night, you must have three. Um, at night, the security must, when there is um, a horn at the door, you first peep, look at the car plate number, check in the system, is it a staff um, car? If it's a staff car, does person have access through that particular gate or you route the person? You know, all that, these are procedures that should be documented. It's not something that should be done haphazardly. Succession planning, what's, what is it in succession planning? How 
Do you come about as a strong planning? How do you handle grievance in, in your organization? How do you handle reward and, uh, and recognition, risks and legal procedures, uh, general administration of discipline, employee, employee engagement, and so on and so forth? So let's look at, for instance, recruitment management. How do you actually handle recruitment? Mind you, you still have this course. You establish that there is a need for this, that okay, there's actually a need for this vacancy. Even if it's a position that someone was occupying, it's it's a tradition in most of that once someone just leaves, they lost ah, let's let's replace immediately. No, you have to do an audit to ensure that even when that person was there, was this person. you watch short lists, you make your interview. How do you interview also matters. How you interview also matters. It's as important as short listing. In fact, you, you, have, you have to, to make your interview seamless. You have to short list properly. You have to short list properly. You have to short bad sound, okay. Is anybody else having, if you can hear me loud and clear, loud and clear, please type zero zero in the chat room. If you can't um, hear me loud and clear, type two two in the chat room. If it's not clear, okay. So we have to, okay, okay, we couldn't hear from the beginning, okay, all right. So if it's still happening till now, Martha, you may need to check your device or your network. All right, so, um, so you identify the vacancy, develop job description, publish your jobs, um, then you shortlist. When you're shortlisting, are you using a, um, an applicant tracking system to shortlist, which makes your recruitment, your shortlisting easy, or you are using an email format. If you are using email formats, which most organization does, do you begin to open every individual email to look? No, they are just simple ways. You know, that, that's why this course is called foundation because we, we, we take cognizance that, that there are some, not every organization can afford that um, automated system. They are just simple techniques that I was using in my early days of my career. And what is that technique? If I'm shortlisting for administrative officer, you just go to your email and type administrative officer. What that we do, and search out for administrative officer in your inbox, what that we do is that everybody who used administrative officer as the email title automatically pops up. All those that fail to use it are screened out automatically. Is that right? You see, that is why even those who are applicants should apply correctly, because it will also help, whether international job, local job. So you see, the first people have been filtered. Then you may then wish to begin to examine the other emails, looking at if the, the qualification, the competencies you need, the skills, if you need somebody that has worked in HR, or if you need someone that have worked in HR in a manufacturing company, or someone who has worked in HR in small moving consumer goods, um, company sector, or one who have worked in HR in the health sector. We need to look at all those things and shortlist. Then you have your interview. Unfortunately, 
in most interviews we seen around this part of the world in Africa, Nigeria, the little I have seen, the little I've seen, it's more or less like an interrogation. But an interview ought to be a, a, a time that you look out for things that you couldn't see in the CV. Things you could not see in the CV. That is what you look out for at the interview stage. You could have one or two stages of interview, depend on the organization. But two is actually okay. So we have even up to three, four, five, six interviews. And you keep going and going and going. And sometimes I'll just back out. Okay, so the next should be making an offer. Making an offer. You make your offer to your um, best or best candidates or candidates. Um, a friend of my HR colleague was telling me some two days ago, that was on Monday, that um, he's negotiating with somebody and the lady is being too stubborn. And I was like, if I had if I had that vacancy, I would have employed that person, even with that money that you're asking, that she's act that either she's asking for if I can't move my ground. Say why? He said, that's the kind of person I want. He said, no, he doesn't want that kind of person because she's too stubborn. I said, exactly. You should. People who are, you see, you, the process of interviews where you used to evaluate and look at people. How somebody negotiates will tell you how the best people negotiate on behalf of your company. If they, the person just rush and accept the offer, don't shit for your company. He or she may not be able to do that very well. Does this sound like the truth? Yes, it sounds like the truth. It sounds like the truth. So if you see um, one who seems to be stubborn in negotiation, please ensure you employ such person. Because it's it's in it, that's my own personal thinking, anyways. My own personal opinion. It's not a, a professional opinion, but that's my own personal professional opinion. I will personally employ such person if I um can call the shot because it tells me that that person can um, actually stand firm and negotiate on behalf of the company. And the next, which is also very important after offer is accepted, is onboarding. Onboarding. You onboard the staff. You onboard the staff. Okay. So to achieve this, you need job aid, you need things like the job description, email, interview sheets, CV, cover letter, credentials, offer letter, employee handbook, slide, PowerPoint slides to um, onboard your staff. You need all these things to make your decision when it comes to recruitment. Is there anything we are missing? Is there anything we are missing here, the ETC? Can we add something? This, this is not, um, you see, these things, we've, these processes we've, we've, we've stated out are not um, what you should do. It's not what I think I should follow. It's a standard process that your organization must adopt. And as a HR person, you should make them adopt. For some of us that are not into HR, you can talk your HR into it. Who said you cannot um, um, drop a policy in conjunction with your HR. Okay. Uh, so the the next is the next is con offer letter and contract letter. We Remember, this is part of the things that are part of the things that should uh, make up your recruitment um, age. These are part of the things. So, in recruitment letter or contract letter, what should be the components? What should, according to the Nigerian labor law, what should be the components? You can see it from your screen here. These are part of the complement components. So you may take wish to take a look at your current appointment letter 
or when you want to offer, if, if your organization, the, the letter you are using today, if it has these components, these basic ingredients, every other one can, um, may not be really important, but you see these ones that are here, this is, these are statutory in, in line with, um, um, in line with the Nigerian labor law. So on the screen, we have um, agreed compensation. So what is the agreed numeration? You people have agreed to uh, pay, and he has also agreed to collect same, or she, he or she have agreed to collect same. There was an issue. I posted something on, on my LinkedIn and someone chatted me up on a salary and said that there is an issue they are having in their department. The issue was they, um, they recruited somebody, the person has started work. As a, according to him, they are paying the person, I think, 80,000 more than what they're supposed to pay her. And it has been ongoing for close to eight months or, so, or thereabouts, eight or 10 months. Because it was 800,000 we calculated 10 months before they discovered. And um, how did it happen? When the person came on board, they had this agreement on them. They, they were like, okay, we'll pay you. Was it 240 or thereabout? And there was this back and forth. And there was no concrete agreement. The lady started work. What they had in mind to pay, according to what he told me, to configure to pay was um was um is it i can't just remember i know that there's 80 whooping up different is it 80 or 40 thousand are different i think 40 thousand are different it's 400 thousand yeah so there was a difference of 400 thousand yeah 40 thousand rather so i think it should be 180 thousand good it was they, they they were paying her 80 thousand as against 140 that they felt they agreed to pay now, after some time, somehow it was flagged that I ah, know this lady is supposed to be earning this. This what they look at her net. So they asked her to refund. Say no, I actually asked for two hundred. I think I did one eighty. And <laughs> I'm not even okay with that. And they are telling me to make a refund. So they were asking me if the company have a legal basis on that. I was like, <laughs> and I threw the question back at the HR person. I said, if this lady had come and said that what people agreed from beginning was actually 180, but what she's earning is 140, would you have paid her the backlog? And he drew back and was like, no, but let me look at it from this angle. And I said, no, let's look at it from every angle now. I've understood your angle. Let us also look at it from the other angle. He said, no. I said, so go and do likewise. He asked, what are the chances of their cases in court? I said, your, your chances are slim because the, um, for three months, which the court using is using what they call body language to engagement. When there's no contract between you and anybody, and the court assumed that within three months, you have had an agreement because you are waking up to go to work, you are, you know, so you can't come tomorrow and deny any part of this person working for you or not working for you because for three months, you will have been consistent in your verbal contract. So you have to be strong on this. You have to be firm on this. And that is why I do advise most organizations that when you calculate the gross, also calculate the net for that employee. So as that person is signing, the person is sure what he or she is getting by the end of the month. So the job location should be stated in the letter according to the Nigerian labor law. So you can't employ, have an interview in um, Abuja, and after the interview, the person resumes there. And all of a sudden, um, you, you, you just take the person to another place without making proper arrangement. That is why the location is very important. The person have a choice to accept, okay, I want location, I don't want location before resumption, okay? Job title or designation, what is the person's, what is the person coming in as? What is the person coming in as? It also matters. You need to if you need to affirm yourself and get conversant with the rulings of um, 
National Industrial Court of Nigeria. Um, as I'm saying, there are so many examples that are coming to my head, but I can't just keep saying all of them. But one of it that I read recently was um, somebody who was employed on, I think, on a 40 or 50,000 year salary, and the person is an um, audit manager, an audit manager. And after some time, the person sued them that he has not been paid. I think somebody else came from in another department and he was paid something higher, and the, and the guy had to sue them. I said that no, he was he, he was employed for an assist. It was he's being paid an assistant position, even though he's a manager. And he actually won the case. That's why all these things need to be written. Mode of exit. How do you terminate contracts? Who can terminate contracts? How do you terminate contracts? What is duration? Notice period. Type of employment. Is it a contract employment? Is it a casual employment? Is it a part-time employment? Is it a professional? Um, um, permanent employment, then your hours of work, four to five, um, sorry, eight to four, eight to five, eight to six, eight to 10, whatever it is, there must be agreement of your hours and days of work. Employers' contact information should be clearly written. That is why it should be written on the letterhead of the organization. Commencement dates should also be there. They are know that employee have rights even when they've not started work with you they can sue you for instance you engage an employee if employee have um, gotten contract, contract letter commencement dates and all of a sudden you're canceling the contract man you should be ready for a court case you should be ready for it you should be ready for it so except in a um, few cases where there is a force major that's where your chances are high but if every other thing remains the same, you may risk paying a very huge, huge damage fee. Then confidentiality, confidentiality is also important. Um, on both ways, both the employee should be confidential about the empl employer's data and the employer's data. Employer should be con um, confidential about the employee's data. That's why an employer cannot just release and place data to the public, to the press, without um, a competent court of jurisdiction ruling on that. Okay. So, is there any of these missing in your contract letter? You may wish to look at it again. If there is, just type it in the chat room. Let's see how we can advise. Is any of these missing in your employment later? Okay, so I guess no. Making an offer. When you don't do that, it causes what is called leads to agitation, or rather, related deprivation. Well, in related, in, in related deprivation, you have dissatisfaction, and that dissatisfaction leads to agitation, and then agitation agitation could now lead to further uh, form of damages, like workers downing their tools, workers sabotaging the organization, and so on and so forth. Where you have people with same qualification, same years of experience, same everything, but different salary. It's, who have, who have been in such organization? Just type yes, if you have been in such organization, yes. If you've not, still type no. Still type no. And, that's why in government, you, don't, you really have that in government. You really see that kind of thing in government. Because government, once you are coming in with your, um, with your BSc, 
you already know you are going to grade grade uh, grade level eight. Now the step may differ, but the, the central thing is that you're on grade level eight. Um, apart from some professionals that start from nine and so on and so forth and then um, then NGOs also have, have really done a very good work in this aspect of salary structures. Most NGOs, most international um, NGOs have done a very good work in this. Where it doesn't exist, where you don't have a salary structure, you can use grid level of similar person, of similar person. For instance, an admin officer is earning what maybe an account officer is earning with the same years of experience, the same everything, the same educational qualification. You know, um, then negotiate professionally. Negotiate professionally. Don't like my friend was doing that. He's already angry because she's negotiating. There's nothing wrong in can candidates pushing for um, negotiation. I mean, should the candidate also be angry that you are trying to underprice him or her? No. So don't also be angry that a candidate you feel and a candidate is overpricing him or herself. Remember, employment is a contract, not a favor. So if you can't pay for the service of that person, you can as well let go and maybe shortlist that again or go to the next person. Person depends on what your options. Onboarding. Onboarding is the process of integrating a new employee into an organization. When onboarding, you give further clarity on questions about the employment, the organization, the job role, the industry expectation, work ethics, and policies. Onboarding is supposed to cover all these. Some organizations don't on board. <laughs> Some organizations you on board yourself. You need to figure out things yourself. You need to ask questions yourself too. In fact, some organizations you'll be there for like two years and you'll not be like, oh, is this how this is done? Why? Because such person was not given an onboarding. There was an organization that I was asked to consult for some, some, some time ago. Um, it, disciplinary action was to be taken. And part of the excuse the person gave was, he's not aware that that kind of policy exists. He's not aware. And there are not been any occurrence of such. According to labor law, it is your duty as an employee, uh, employer to provide job for the employee. Therefore, you must provide job, job which should be in the job description. The job should be in where? The job description. So when you're onboarding, that is where you throw more light on that particular job description. You throw more light on the industry. Every industry have its own peculiarity. The problem a marketer is facing in a hospital, it's not the same problem a marketer is facing a construction company. The problem a, a marketer is facing in, um, let's use a company like Cowbell, it's not the same problem a marketer that works in a hotel is facing. So every industry has its own peculiarity. What are the expectations of the management? They are always unwritten expectations. So hope we all know that. In fact, the unwritten expectation is even more powerful than the written expectation, the written one in your, in your upper letter. For instance, uh, um, staying back late at, at work could be an expectation of your employer. It could be. Or you are employed as a as an admin person or as a, um, uh, yeah, as an admin person, but 
you are kind of serving other things. You could you could do other things for handy when you need the to do guy or to do girl. Just call him. He's going to be. He can handle this. That could be the expectation. That is unwritten. So you, you during the onboarding, there are certain unwritten expectations that would be told to the new hire. Salary components. So let's see. Um, we are many of us here earn salary, or we know some who earn salary. What are components of salary? What are the basic components of salary? What are the basic components of a salary? What makes up salary? According to the law. And this law is even internationally, not just even, it's not, it's not about Nigeria now. Because I have a friend in the, I think she should be here from Hitley. Okay, I can see you. You are welcome. So just, uh, I hope after this class, you join us subsequently. My friend from Hitley is here. So this also applies for international. What are components of salaries? People know how I did. I will not proceed until I get what I want. We'll remain on this slide. Once it's time, we'll close and enter the next, uh, uh, the next class. Many of us are earning salary or our end salary. So what are the things you, you, basically, you basically see in your salary? There's one that in the salary breakdown is always at the top. Let me give you a, a clue now. In the salary breakdown, it's always at the top. Yes. Basic salary, okay. Then we have what again? What else, what else? No, 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 no. The components first. Let's get the components first before we go to deductions. Housing. Yes. <laughs> well, Mr. Kadev, that's another way to look at it. But if you, you can see, yeah, transport, then other benefits. Good. So health. Other allowances. Yes, exactly. Those are the components of the salary. Pension is, is under deduction now. So. Let's see if we, we are close to the answer. So we have number one, basic allowance, housing allowance, transportation. Now you see this first three, BHT or BTH, as anyone you tell to call it, they are sacrosanct in every salary. They are sacrosanct in every salary. You have your basic based on the standard, you have 25%, then the housing 20% and transportation 10%. Other ones you can split it. I just intentionally split it and the wardrobe, responsibility, hazard. You can decide to split it the way you want. Now you could see if you calculate from number one to six, it should give you 100%. Though this thing, we are going to do this in the um, module two or so in the second level. We'll see how we calculate salary. Now from the number seven, which is your lip allowance, it's not But uh, here it's not so monthly gross. It's um, I mean your lip allowance, ten percent of your B H C, which is your basic housing and some obligation does basic. Unfortunately, there is no law in Nigeria 
that talks about leave allowance, what it should be. So it's usually at the discretion of employers. But you see, that's why we need to review some of these our laws. Um, and gradually, the industrial court is gradually setting the pace for that because most of their ruling becomes a law. So leave allowance so for some organization is just 10% of your basic annual basic or 10% of your basic housing or transport or just your one month basic salary. I've seen it in various places how it's placed. So it's 10% of your annual basic salary. Most times it's always 10% of your annual basic salary. salary. So it's getting more interesting. In our level two, we're going to be uh, using, we we'll use Excel to do the calculations of how to arrive at your basic salary. So that before you take a job, once they tell you the amount, you know what you're negotiating. You don't just go and say, okay, I want 300,000. And when they pay your 300,000 naira gross, what will hit your account, 120,000. And I'm like, ah, what, what did you deduct? There might be other deductions. Mind you, <laughs> in deductions, some organizations deduct other things apart from the normal um, government statutory deductions. So we'll see that. So now, in the when we are mentioned comp components, and we are mentioning deductions, which like NH, NHF, um, which is National Housing Fund, the pension, all those are deductions. All those are deductions. It is that deduction that after you've taken out, you arrive at your net. So component of salary gives you what is called the gross salary. Deductions, after deductions, you get what is called the net salary. Are we clear? Are we clear on that? Okay. So what are the components of, um, what are deductions that we see in our salary? And when you're talking about deduction, can somebody help us with um, uh, um, pension deduction? How many percent is pension? How many percentage is pension? How many percentage is pension? from the employee salary, from the employee salary. Let's start with pension first, 8% from the employee salary. Someone else said 7%. Okay, is there anybody else? Let's start with pension first. Okay, so we have eight and seven. From the employee salary, 8% is usually deducted, while the employer's contribution is usually 10%. My slide is not moving, so don't worry, we'll still move the slide. We'll move the slide while we're discussing for now. Um, now, for tax, what is tax deduction? What is tax deduction? What is deduction for tax? Practicing HRs, May, um, may know this. For those that have not handled payroll before, you may find it difficult. 5%. Okay, someone says 5%. You may really say 5%. Like about 22%. Okay. When we see what, you know, Eric, when I figure from you, I, I, I don't know how to confirm it because we are not, um, we are in different. Locations. <laughs> okay, yes, according to salary, salary level, but they are statutory percentages. So, what are those percentages? They are arranged in a particular manner and there are numbers attached to it. Um, Grace, I'm answering your question. I know it's across salary level, but there, there is for PE, for instance. Okay, so let's use PE, let's specific. So, for PE, what are the deductions? Marilyn, this um, percentage is for those who are contract staff. 5%. So for PE, what is the percentage for PE? You can give it a try. You can give it a try. So for PE, um, PE salary deduction, that is why we have to follow in our next when we are doing a second level, you have you just have to. So you see what uh, for those that account handle their payroll, 
you see what they do. You can brag that you've understood payroll. I see some people, some people running a short course on payroll, a one-day course for 10,000, 20,000, 25,000. But here you're getting it with um, your certification and every other thing. And that is not even that's just a certificate course, not like a certification course. Okay. So let's go. It's it's clear that many of us here have not handled payroll. So let's see what it is. Pension is 8% of your basic housing and transport. 8% of your basic housing and transport. Then you have seven, the first 300. Payroll is calculated on your annual salary. And of course, not even your entire gross. There is a tricky thing you do there. There's what is called consolidated, and there's what is tax relief, what you get tax relief, tax, tax relief for. It is that tax relief you then split. But we can't take it in this class, not for foundation class, it's for the strategic class. So, so you have um, 7%, 11%, 15%. It's just a small example is, if your per annum salary is one million naira, let me use it as, as an example. Let me use it as an example. Your, or your per annum salary is, um, let me use 70,000, for instance. Mm, what should I use? Okay, 900,000. Let me use 900,000. The first 300, when you minus 300, you are left with 600, right? From that 300, this is, this is wrong, but I just want you to understand it, have a background knowledge is 7% of that 300. That's what we minus at the first stage. It's remaining 600. The next 300 that will be picked will be 11%. Now it's remaining 300, right? That the next... First 500, after that 300, 15%. The next 500 is um, 19%. I think you should have about 1. Point something million remaining. One, the, the next 1.6 million is 21%. And the remaining fraction, which might be like 200,000, will be 24%. When we get there, remember, like I said, it's not from the gross you do this deduction. So I'm just using this so that we can have an understanding of what we are saying. So we have looked at um, the concept of human resource operations. We have examined the various op um, operations in the human resource. We picked a um, few, especially recruitment, those that concerned about recruitment. Why I picked that is because most others like change management, it's a subject, on, even the recruitment is a subject on its own, but because it's um, a basic at this level is what you do on a daily basis at work, you can begin to, it can help you to hit the road. So influence of external bodies and laws on human resource operations. What bodies affect or influence um, what your human resource, how you work in your organization? In your, in your, in your, okay, we'll do something now. Let's pick, um, we'll pick, um, okay, when we get to the, the, that particular slide. We may not be wrong to say that all the human resource operations in an organization are influenced by external factors. True or false? We may not be, read the statement again and see whether it is true or false. All the human resource operations in an organization are influenced by external factors. True or false?
true or false? True. Okay. Do we have true, 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 true? Can't we just get one false? So the person can tell us and help us explain better. Maybe there is a different perspective to it. Okay, so, okay, false. Okay, so Erica, you have your mic open and you will tell us um, why you said it's false. Let's have another perspective to it. Erica, you can unmute your mic now. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, Erica. Um, I hope everyone can hear me clearly. So um, first of all, I want to say there is a baby, so okay. in case you hear noise, the strong. No problem. Yeah. Um, so from my, I would say, personal point of view and what I've studied, I think um, human resource operations, it's influenced not only by standard factors, but also um, factors within the organization, but external and internally. It's not just solely on an external factor. Yes, we agree that, but we, what we are saying now, the hypothesis we are putting out is that the internal factors, as a matter of fact, is being influenced by the external factor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. if that's the case, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> say we are all babies. <laughs> All right, so um, so they manifest in they manifest as corporate bodies, government bodies, and other non structured actors. So that thing we call our vision culture is first the influence of our external bodies. Let me give you a typical example. Your employment letter that you are, you are drafting is first influenced by and guided by content of the Nigerian labor law. That is why you see at the beginning, we showed you the content of employment, what should, according to the labor law, what shall and must be in your employment letter. So you see that a typical example, that's even the, the basis of your employment, of your of bringing food together. There, there are things you can't subject a staff to. All this is because of government regulation. Look at um, Sarah, what they are doing to the government. They are suing government, government sneeze, they sue them, government cough, they sue them, anything they do. So that's just how it, it works. Because of such organization, the likes of amnesty, Government have a particular way of behaving. For those that study international relations, you understand what I'm saying. Because of the activities of non-state actors, like the likes of um, um, Usman Bin Ladi, um, um, organizations like terrorist organizations, um, the likes of Bill Gates, who is, who is a non-state actor, the likes of Dangote, it, they, their conduct influence government policies. That is also how conduct of these actors and non state actors influence what company does. If you want to go into the cement business in Nigeria, for instance, you have to think twice. If you want to go into seedling business in Nigeria, you have to think twice. If you want to go into um, production of noodles, you have to think twice. Why? Because there are other actors that it means that even your location, all those have influence. So let's look at the corporate bodies and government bodies, as well as other non-state actors. Even the indigenous of where you are, where you are those, those constitute non-state actors attitude of people around that place do people see attitude? do people see work as something prestigious they see work as something they should do if they don't see work as something they should do then you have problem getting your manpower so do you, do you understand the aspect of external influence 
So let's look at government bodies. What are the government bodies now affecting, general government bodies affecting I will do something in the chat we don't mention. There's another one I will give. We have the Ministry of Labor. We have the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust for NSIT. We have the Federal Mortgage Bank. PENCOM. All right. So now the next one is depending on your industry. This is where we come in now. We're going to play a little game. Type three most crucial documents in your organization or four. Four. Okay. Please put it in one chat. Put it in one chart, type the four most crucial documents or crucial bodies rather, crucial bodies that regulate your organization. Then somebody would, would say the likely industry you are, the likely sector you are, or what you do probably. So
All right. Um, the 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 facilitator is having uh, some challenges with his network, but I trust he will join us back in a moment. So while uh, we expect him to be back, please let's be free to take our attendance because we are almost done with this particular course or with this particular section. The section is on. Um, The section is on um, HR operations. So please kindly do well to take your attendance and then let's, let's hope that the network brings him back. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. B. I'm, I'm very sorry, very, very sorry. It can be embarrassing network. It's very, very, very terrible. So sorry. Okay, so I, I, I know that I should be the one who is lagging behind now. Um, so you are going to, and I must have typed it already in the chat room. So you can copy and paste again since I, I just rejoined. So copy and paste. I want to believe you've typed it. The government body is regulating the activities of your company. Four of them. Please ensure that it's in one. Um, it's in one message, one chat as you are sending it. The four government bodies regulating your organization. The four key government bodies. Somebody will will make an attempt. Please don't put FIRS. That is statutory. Don't put a PENCOM. That's statutory. You can put any other one. We then somebody will. Um, tell you which organization or what your company does. Okay, so can we have that? Can we have that again for those that must have typed it earlier? Just copy and paste it. If you can hear me, type one one in the chat room or you post the message. Okay. Whether where you've worked, you can also use where you've worked before. You can you can use where you've worked before. You can use where you are working. Or where you intend to work. If there are those not working. Okay, what I ask is type the four government bodies regulating the activities of your organization. Of your organization and somebody else will tell you what industry you are. You are in into or what sector you are into. Okay. I hope you understood the question or uh, what what was asked. Okay, let me type. Let me type my in one message, in one message, in one message. Okay. So someone is already typing. We are still waiting. Is it only just this two? Okay, so good. Let me then stop my, let me stop typing my own here. Okay, so from Adeyemi's Caleb's um, post, which sector can we say he's into? Which sector can we say he's into? Um, for that of Ministry of 
which sector can we say um, Grace is into? At, at, um, at the BC, who's, uh, who's, who is into telecom? Who is into telecom? Let me not assume for you. Who is into telecom? We are waiting. Caleb, okay, good. So, now, who, um, what of Grace and uh, myself? Which sector can can you say Grace is into? Another person, another person. It can still be at ABC. Marilyn, uh, we just type NAVDAC. So we are still waiting patiently. We are still waiting patiently. Okay, you see, it, it's important that as HR, we concern ourselves with all these things. It doesn't matter if you're not in that industry. Okay, let's just someone say, son, FRF, Federal Ministry of Power, NAFDAQ, ETC. So, this person, there is Alice Jane Brown. So, is this Federal Ministry of Power? Is that what it is? If that is the case, let's. But, but if it's Federal Ministry of Power, I'm trying to look at NAVDAC and Federal Ministry of Power. Okay, Petroleum, okay, so Federal Ministry of Petroleum, so okay, good. So which sector? I'll start calling out names. Okay, so we have For who? Who is under oil and gas? Grace is education. Let's see. Grace, education, education, universal basic education. Okay, education, um, correct. Can also be NGO. It can also be NGO. It might also be humanitarian service. That's for Grace. It could be education. It could be um, NGO. I think the last person, Alice, okay. Good. So, you see, this is good for you to know the, uh, the various government bodies and what they do as HR. Just consign yourself with that because as HR, you may find yourself outside your, your, the particular industry you are. Outside your, the particular industry you, you are. You may see something like this. You see something like uh, PP. You see something like uh, NSITF. You see something like um, BATS. You see something like PENCOM. And um, what am I, am I missing? Let's just even pick this one. You see something like this. Compliance issue like this. You can just okay this point to uh, what do you call it? Contracts, then to contract and bidding. Why is this important to HR? You may just say this is not. It's important because it helps you in conform conformity issue. Conformity. It helps you in conform. That's your compliance comes in. As we go further, we'll see this. Let's proceed. We've spent so much time. So we have um government board and depend on the sector so list four sectors you associate yourself with and their clearance someone should tell you the possible industry you are which we've done so we have corporate bodies like cipm chatter institute of personnel management we have cipm we have nma that is for medical mba icon current carbon icon and so on so all these now have their as as hr person we want to employ an accountant you should ensure that this person has um, is M is an MBA? Doesn't has an ICANN. Doesn't has Korean. If it's an engineer, if it's a builder, carbon. If it's a, an architect, should have um, a con certificate.
Who else can see my slide? So, so you see, um, review how to apply skills needed for human resources department. So nine elements of effective HR department, invariably nine skills, you can change it to nine skills. Why these are elements of HR department? You can also have it as skills. Let's pick from the 12 o'clock, high HR reputation, what is the reputation of the HR department? I explained that further as we go further in the slide. Does the HR have a good reputation when it has to do with discipline, charisma, um, and so on and so forth? If the attendance is in the chat room. You can um, start marking your attendance for this particular module. We are going to enter into introduce um, conversation and benefits before we close the class. So HR strategy, are you strategic in um, how you handle things? Are you concerned with other departments? Or people be like, oh, more is my work. More is just to employ, to discipline, to pay salary and fight. No, 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 no. HR gone beyond that. You have to be strategic. You should be concerned what audit is doing. You should be concerned what production is doing. You should be concerned what operations is doing. You should be concerned what your manufacturing sector is doing. You should be concerned what your marketing team is doing. HR design processes, policy, and so on and so forth. HR organization. How does HR facilitate the definition, creation of position capacities? HR analytics, very important, very important. Even it's, it's, the world is moving towards data now. So you have to um, move towards that aspect as well as a HR person in presenting your data. HR, how does HR create a healthy practice and work environment, work style? How does HR go about well, what is the leadership style of the HR department? What do HR, like Mr. Mentor was saying yesterday, that um, there are some organizations you fear the HR more than anybody. After maybe the CEO or MD or the executive director or other directors, the next person you're talking about is the HR. Some organization, I worked in an organization where even the HR, it seemed to be more fear than the, 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 the what the CEO we see and overlook, the HR will never, he want to, just why it's being paid salary. So we won't fear the HR more than the CEO. Okay, so HR professionals, all the HR professionals need, need to be know and to, to be effective. So we have things like writing skills, memo. How do you write memo? How do you coin your memo? How do you write your query? How do you write appointment letters, reports? So you have a very good writing skills. Develop your writing skills by just writing, maybe on your Facebook, on your LinkedIn. You know, like myself, I write almost every day. At least there is no week I don't have. Every week I have at least three articles. That's my benchmark. Every week that about HR, about business, every week. So I use that to sharpen also my writing skills. You keep writing. Um, to get better. Computer skills, how do you use Excel and PowerPoint? These are part of the skills HR must possess. Report writing, skilled. Get powered in HR analytics and how to make presentation and how to present it, okay? So you see the computer skills is important. You have it and as well, the report writing skills. Then you have negotiation skills, how to negotiate for both in, with internal vendors and external vendors. Your internal vendors are how to how you negotiate with your staff to arrive at a compromise, how you negotiate with the management, how you negotiate with regulatory bodies, and the next skill is the analytical skills, yes, and life situation, and um, okay. So how you analyze situation, how you view situation, and um, how you analyze data, okay. Persuasive skill, making people to do things without threat or force is also a skill you must possess as HR. 
It's also, you did emotional intelligence today. So that is much of the discussion about emotional intelligence. You have to possess such skills. You know, hear things like, if you don't do this thing today, just drop your designation and go. If you don't do this thing today, you receive query from me. Such does not people that work with fear. They do it just because they are scared, not because they actually see the need for a discipline. HR should be disciplined. Absence of favoritism, you should be firm and show exemplary leadership, strong charisma. You should be a strong will person. You should develop that strong will. You should be, eh, what if people go and start work? Eh? Now, wow, people don't do work. Okay, now, no problem. No problem. No problem. No, 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 no. You have to be firm. You must not even shout to get it done. You can be very calm, but you are driving home your point. Business acumen. A HR has to have a very good business acumen, being strategic business partner to the business, knowing little about audit, marketing, finance, operations, security. What they do is also important. And now to the last, which is um, develop templates and um, use in you. So in this particular place, we're talking about the four Ps. The four Ps we mentioned earlier. The four Ps we mentioned earlier. So what are the four Ps we mentioned earlier? The four P's we mentioned earlier, we have number one, policy, process, procedure, and people. These are the four P's in human resource management. So the first one, which is policy, is a, a set of principles or action adopted by an organization to guide the actions and conduct of activities of staff members, policies, policy, their principles, their principles that should be followed, guiding activities. Okay. And we have the next one process. It's a step by step series of action in order to achieve a particular tax. A step by step, what? Series of action in order to achieve a particular uh, tax and procedure and establish official way of doing a particular tax. So we let's see how all of them comes into play. You have a policy on recruitment. You have a procedure, which is for recruitment. Now you have the pre-recruitment stage. You have the recruitment stage and post-recruitment stage. Can you see the procedure? Then the process is step by step of each of these stages. Do we understand it? If you understand, type type U in the chat room, like U, letter U, type U in the chat room, which stands for understand. U, type U in the chat room if you understand. If you don't understand, type D. If you understand, type U. If you don't understand, type D in the chat room. Okay. Alice Brown don't understand. So for the sake of Alice Brown, we will have to... Um, so policy, policy, um, she didn't also say she don't understand, or he don't understand, I don't know. She didn't do, male or female. So, um, policies are set principles adopted by an organization. We understand that, right? <clears throat> now, the next is process. Step-by-step step of how we achieve a particular thing. Procedure is an established way of doing a thing. Now, so now let's we add, we then added all this together. We added this together now to say, okay, let's see where all of them comes into play. 
So in point, we are taking the first one, which has to do with policy. Recruitment policy, for instance, we had a policy on recruitment, right? It's a policy that stands on its own. Now, inside that policy, there is stages of recruitment, which is the recruitment stage, which is identification of vacancy, which is then the recruitment stage, which is the shortlisting, interview, and offer. Then post recruitment, which is the onboarding. And even in that stages, there are ways of carrying out your interview. You send a mail, you make a phone call, you arrange the interview venue, you give score sheets to all the people interviewing, they write their reports, you collect. You see, all these are step by step of activities in this particular stage of recruitment. Do we understand now, Alice? So, thank you, Alice. So, how do we develop policy? How do we develop policy? We design, develop, analyze, evaluate. And when we look at it, it's, um, it's a circle. It means it's continuous. It means it's continuous. It means it's what? Continuous. It doesn't end. You keep evaluating based on need. For instance, if your policy before said that um, meetings must be held every Tuesday at the office, maybe now you could, with the event of COVID, we can hold our meeting both online and offline for those who can make it to office and those who cannot make it to office, you see? So you keep inventing and making it better till you achieve what you want. So a clearly defined policy and procedures are even more critical during emergencies. They can prevent a business from collapsing when emergency arises. Companies, the world is moving towards the future. And I saw a post that this from a post I saw on LinkedIn that the world's moving towards the future, that business owners, professionals should go to the future and wait for the customers. Policies, we must need to make policies that are futuristic. So many companies foresaw COVID-19 coming and they made provisions for that with their policies, but some never saw it coming. Some never made provision. And many of those companies that never made provisions. We are one of the most hit companies. So step one, you identify the need for a policy. What is the need for this policy? The risks involved of taking the policy or not taking the policy, the cost implication, the vacancy that you've identified that this policy which we feel after it is implemented. Step two, um, determine the content after the um, the, the button, the vacuum, the, get the purpose or the objective, the implementation, the, the glossary, which are the key, some keywords that one needs to understand, and the commencement date of this um, policy. Then the next one, we talk about obtain stakeholder support from up to down, from the toppest management, from the executive management to the least person, you need every support you can get. Every support you can get because otherwise, if you feel that those below are not important, they are going to sabotage your influence. Get approval after all that. Update and revise the policy as time goes on. Plan for, um, uh, plan solution for ch uh, challenge to the policies implementation, both in Canada if you where change management comes in. That's where change management comes in, as well as difficulties employees may have when with carrying out the policy or procedure. So you should also, it's not enough just to roll out policy, but you should also be open to assist and guide your employee. Policy, policies should provide clear guidelines and expectations to ensure fair and consistent practices and legal compliances. So, ladies and gentlemen, 
I believe with these few points of mine, I've been able to convince you that human resource operations is very important in your organization. So I want us to make contribution. Let's write what we have learned so far here. So make a contribution, I will write it for you on the whiteboard. Make a contribution and I will write it on the whiteboard. Make your contribution and I will write it on the whiteboard. Is there any contribution from the house? If none, okay, attendance in the chat room. The attendance is in the chat room. So in the absence of any contribution, I will say thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. I will take your questions. I will take your questions if there is any. Otherwise, we call it a day. So do well to go to um, all social media handles. Um, please, um, Chidindo, direct your questions to the general platform so that everybody can partake in it. Chidindo, change your message setting to um, general so that everybody can see your question. So um, thank you, Mary Lee. So do want to follow IIPM um, on, um, on all social media network. Do well to follow IIPM on all social media network. The name is Integrated Institute of Professional Management. Integrated Institute of Professional Management. Do well to follow us on um, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, uh, on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel where you can view all current, current and past lectures, all current and past lectures. Do where to subscribe to the YouTube channel. How do we get study material? Because we need to study ourselves. Okay. When um, if are you in the chat room? If you're in the chat room, you it's always posted there. Um, um, process. So what is the process of on off boarding? Okay, off boarding is when an employee is leaving um, an organization. So the process of exit, how you exit the employee from exit interviews. And some organization you have of the three exit interview or even two. A friend of mine told me that he's tired of exit interview that they've had two already and they are saying they will have the last stage of exit interview. A very prominent organization. So they are concerned about why is this staff leaving? What are they doing better? Can they make the staff? Maybe the first one could be can they make the staff stay? Second one could be recommendation and so on and so forth. So it's exit management. Please, uh, okay. Um, I wish you could throw more light on government research bodies for different industries. Just keep, join us in all our classes and you will definitely um, see this. This way, today will be the last free class. Today will be the last free class for um, uh, um, this particular course to get other, partake in other class from tomorrow. You have to pay access fee. I think it's 5,000 or 7,000 thereabouts. So, um but engage us so that um we can give you clarity on that feel the attendance feel the attendance and um, feel the attendance all right if you wish to throw more okay we have 
um, discuss on this. We'll also meet this when we are talking in the future again, where we're talking about law and compliance. We'll meet that again in our level two. Okay, we'll meet that in our level two. So without wasting time, we'll just go on a short break. By the time we return, we shall be talking about um, conversation, conversation. Okay, so um, you can see the WhatsApp group in the chat room. Use the link to join the WhatsApp group and channel all your questions there. Use the uh, group to join and channel all questions there. It will be answered even how you get the study materials and every other thing. You need to know payment plan, the flexibility of payment. I'm very sure you've gotten value and you could get more, more, more value. You could get more value. That is why you have to uh, join us. So we're we'll going on um, on a 10, 12 minutes break. By 4.10, we will continue with our next class. By 4.10, we'll continue with our next class. Thank you, Mr. B. I don't know if you have anything to say. If you don't, then. Thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful section on our uh, um... HR operations, I trust we, we got quite a number of things that will help us in our HR career in that um, 